welcome back. Episode number six. We're excited wow. to be here. Second week of May. Hey, you know what? I just want to let you know that I just, it is so much fun for me to sit across the table from you and just talk about stuff that I've heard about over and over again. But it's like, you know what it does is it reminds me of like these moments that we've had together that I'm just like so grateful for. And like it brings up these feelings of like pride and adoration that I'm sure you will benefit from later. I hope so. Like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I I was thinking um, like something that was interesting that kind of came up that in our little discussions was the evolution of the culture of our businesses. From the start to the to the end right now or to where at least we're at now well we're not at the end but we're we're like i think we're kind of in the middle right now so it's always it's always evolving i mean it's never it's never stagnant for the most part <laughs> i think that that's one thing that we can honestly say that it's always interesting in list in logistics so it's like um i mean i remember our early years i think the first business that i owned i was like a really, really bad boss. And I don't even use the term boss because I'm like, I teach the kids. I'm like, you're either a leader or you're a boss. You need to pick which one you're going to be because a boss just tells people what to do. A leader leads them. And, uh, and I was a bad boss. Like I was 20. I did not know what I was doing. I was just trying to get the job done. And, oh man, I just, um, I appreciate those experiences and the like proverbial teeth that I was cutting on those smaller little things that we did because it just like opened my eyes to, to what I didn't, what I didn't want and led me to what I did want. Well, it's like building blocks. It's you're you're figuring it out. You know, I mean, <clears throat> you can't go to school for this and you can learn for it, but you know, we were the hard knocks. We, we figured it out as we went, we figured out things we wanted and didn't want and how it was going to go. And we always, I think, valued our employees, but I think we could have valued them a little bit better. I think we could have treated things a little bit better. We could have uh, definitely, um, you know, it was uh, a lot of growth period for us. I mean, that was the the biggest thing is we were growing in our leadership skills as we were trying to lead others. So Yeah, it was like like learning by fire, though. It. I remember um, probably my greatest challenge was how I regulated my emotions. There was times where I didn't have any emotions about that particular whatever. And then there was times where I was just like, I was personally offended because something didn't happen and it was, it wasn't about me. And I think that's probably been one of my greater um, leadership lessons is it's never usually about me. If there's something that's not happening, it's because there needs to be better communication or um, there needs to be some sort of seeking to understand. Like it's, um, it's people just don't have the same background that we do. And so they're not going to think the way that we do. And therefore they're not always going to do the job the way we think they should do it. You know, and I, I think over time that has changed a little bit because our management team now works with us on a more one-on-one -on -one basis and they kind of understand usually the answers or the, um, situations that we get into that, how they're, how we, we would react because they've watched us for quite some time now. And they usually, uh, well, w within those bounds, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they take care of things for us now in a different matter. And we're not as hands on with the, um, I'd say, uh, working with the employees one-on-one -on -one as we used to be, we were more in the management side of it that we manage and we still have some place that we do manage, but, um, it's because they, you know, sometimes come to us because they've been with us for eight or 10 years now. And, they just know that they can get the answer that they're looking, um, that we can help them navigate through different situations. So it, it, our roles have changed a lot from the days that we ran 10, 12, 15, 20 employees or ice cream trucks or landscaping companies or painting yep. companies or, uh, you know, all the different things that we did back in the day, snow plowing. I mean, those were all different there. But, you know, some of the things I still like is like you take Dale. I mean, Dale's one of our contractors with Browns Up now. I mean, he redoes our buildings, he does our condos, he stuff that, but... Dale used to be one of our employees that helped mow lawns and did landscaping and snow lawn plowing. maintenance and snow plowing. And he was one of our key employees back in the day. And, you know, he took his knowledge where he got from working with us and other people and other companies. Uh, he worked for a restoration company and stuff, and he started his own contracting company. And we ended up doing some small jobs with them and ended up giving some bigger jobs. And uh, 
Uh, they've been working with us now almost three years now uh, plus. Coming up to that. And uh, redoing some of our condos or houses or uh, complexes, and so those partnerships that we developed with them. But in an earlier age, working with them as employees, uh, it's neat to see how they've moved up and their kids have moved up. And uh, when I talk about Dale and Mindy, is like, you know, they have these scholar kids that are all getting scholarships for football and basketball sports, and yeah. sports, and they're heavily involved. And, you know, one thing I it kind of leads into it is that Dale and Mindy have been very good. I, I think stewards of uh, guarding their time sometimes too, is like, you know, they're there for their kids' sporting events. They're there for going college places where I don't know if we were as more intentional at that time um, with uh, trying to guard our time like we should have. And, yeah. and as you as new business owners really need to guard that time because um, our kids are getting to an age now that you know they're, they're in the teens and we have one that's just turned 30. And uh, did we take the time that we should have in there or we were we building our business at the time? And I, I can tell you that I, I can tell you a, a little bit of both sides. I think we thought we were spending enough time with them. We were doing the right things for them. But if you ask them. But if you ask them, we weren't. Um, but, you know, I mean, as anything with kids, if you're around too much, they don't want you around. And if you're not there around enough, they want you there. So there's there's really never a happy medium. But in our side, we are now taking more time out to be with them, more things to do with it. And then more time for just ourselves, too. Yeah. Because on your relationship, you have to make sure that, we are solid, so our kids are solid. And sometimes taking the kids on every vacation does not make that solid because that's that's a chore. We're entertaining itself. them. We're entertaining them. But I, I have to tell you that Brent and Kathy had it down pat when they used to take kids with them, and we never understand why they took other kids on vacation with them. And uh, now I, I, I had made that phone call to them about a month ago and told them I understand their methodology now and why they were doing that. And they laughed because they figured it out way before we did yeah. is that when you bring other people for them, um, they're entertained and we don't need as much entertainment. We're just happy to be at the place. Like yeah. when we go to Hawaii, we're just happy to be in the beach we're and put our feet the in there. Beach and we're and the, it's quiet. Getting, getting some color and getting the ocean and just, it's quiet and, the, and looking at the beautiful, beautiful scenery. And at 14 years old, they're not grasping that. They're not, no. they're not enjoying that as much. Like it's cool. Yeah. The beach is good. Now, what are we doing next? What's our plan today? What, what are we, what are we do? eating? Can we go here? Can yeah. we do this? So, um, our expectations are, should be differently than sometimes ours are than theirs. And so we're, we try to figure that out. So anyways, I, I guess that what I'm trying to say is that if you're starting your company, make sure that you're giving ample time in your family too, um, as well as your pets and, you know, your properties or whatever your enjoyment is too. It's a, uh, if you enjoy playing racquetball, make sure you're going to get up and play a few games of racquetball. Don't don't let your – there's always something to do in our company. There's never a time in the day that we don't have something to do. It's just we, we have to do it all the time. We could 24-7 if we chose. And having a 24-7 company that's 365 days a year, there's never not something going on. There's never that my phone's going off or a pager's going off or emergency calls or the ambulance service has got questions because they're doing a transport to Seward. We're still there for them, but we have layers of that. I, I don't have to be that guy 20, 24 seven now. Now I, I take a, I'll take a manager duty for somebody if they need to. I'll, I'll be the manager on call that day. But we have other layers of different managers and different people that can do that. And now we figure out that we can leave like on a Thursday and come back on a Sunday or Monday and go to the lake house or go do some stuff. And it doesn't mean we're not doing any work over there too. It just means that we're trying to do that work, work life balance. And that'll probably be one of the hardest things you ever do in your company is trying to figure out where that work life balance is. I mean, I can tell you that a lot of people in tourism and a lot of people in different companies say that they have um, sometimes a higher divorce rate or they have a higher rate of uh, failures in some things because they're dedicating so much of their time just to work. And at the end of the day, it's a job. It shouldn't yeah. be your, it shouldn't be your, uh, your life. So we have taken a long time to figure that out and, you know, teen years. I mean, that's how long it's taken us up there. And, you know, 24 years in business with BAC and then other businesses that we owned in there, you know, it's 40 years probably that we've been in, well, I'd say probably 35 years that we've been doing businesses for ourselves, And um, that that's the biggest takeaway. It's just work balance life. You know, and I kind of, in my, from my own opinion, I look at this more like work-life balance doesn't really exist, but I have the choice to create my lifestyle and it's not for everybody. My lifestyle is that I have a little bit of time for this organization and a little bit of time for this organization and, and these like pockets throughout my day and throughout my week. 
but it also incorporates part of my lifestyle is being a mom and being married and managing um, the responsibilities around family life. And it's, um, it's this whole picture. It's not just a box here and a box there. It's like my day flows like this because this is, this is what makes me happy and this is what I've chosen for myself. And I think that one of the smartest things that we did do in parenting was we decided to pull the kids out of regular school at junior high. I honestly don't believe that we would have seen them as much as we do if they had been in school for seven hours every single day. And, and what that has afforded them is they have more access to us. They see us more, but they also have this space to pursue their own interests. It's like, how many, how many families do you see in crisis mode? I feel like we were in this like survival mode earlier on in, in our businesses where we were just getting through the day. Like we were knocking out the problems of the minute we were just, and we were coming home and we were just getting takeout and sitting and just like melting into the furniture. And, um, I, I see like our kids in America today, they're like, they're going to school at seven 30 in the morning. They're class, 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 lunch. They're like guided through their whole like schedule. They've got after school activities and then they're trying to get something decent to eat for food. And then they got an hour of homework and then they're getting up and they're doing it right, right back again. And, like and they're job. in crisis. Like another but, job. <laughs> but it's like they're in this survival mode. And in survival, there's no room for optimization or for creativity. And I, I see our children have had all of this these pockets of creativity that they get to like see and do because they're not in survival mode. They're not they're not in the rat race. You know, it's uh Different rules of thumb. It's not for everybody. There's not for uh, some parents that just wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be able to handle that. I can tell you that I'm not the the force behind that. Athena is, and our family partnership that we work with, and everybody else that we do stuff with. It's 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 really nice to have um, some other people to help us with that. But um, I, I don't have the worries about my kids having bullies at school or things like that. We don't have to worry about school shootings as much. We worry about for other people's kids, but unless our kid happened to be going there to do something, um, we don't have those worries about things happen at those schools. And that's nice. And, you know, we like to travel and we like to take them and we figure out they're getting a lot of education when we take them to Thailand or we take them to uh, Europe or we take them to somewhere else. Yeah. All these different places that we get to go to, they get to enjoy those life experiences. And I think that's good. And still they're getting an education. They're just doing it a different way. So, um, yeah, we do get to see them a little bit more on those times and, uh, we, we get to have some more access to them. They have more access to us. And I think that really um, thinking about what works best and balancing that, that, that holistic like lifestyle that you're looking for. And we really encourage that for our team members. I mean, that is part of the integrity piece that um, hopefully is coming across when we're demonstrating our own lives in front of others is that, we're, we're being true to who we are to the best of our ability of who we think we are and understand who we are in that season of our life. And in this season of our life, we, we just, we understand that this is not just about running an operation. This is about humans serving humans and, um, how, how can we be part of the support system around that? You know, and you look at this as, um, you know, and I've said this time and time again, you see people get new cars and they're able to buy a house or they, cause they're employed with you. We just had one of our supervisors the other day, Lisa, that came up to us and came up to me just two days ago and just explained that she bought her dream home. She bought her final home that she wanted to buy. And it's on a couple acres and it's in Eagle River and it's a log home. And she's so excited about that. Yeah. You know, part of her going through those journeys and branches is having good stable employment and where she's working a place that she can buy a home and she's so good to our employees and she's a supervisor for us that, you know, it's exciting for her. So we get to live kind of that assignment with them too, is because, you know, we, we own several homes, we own uh, businesses, we own things like that. And we know the accomplishments that we made when we were able to buy our first commercial building, which yeah. was only like five years ago, four or five years ago, we bought our first commercial building that we own that, you know, um, it was a huge accomplishment for us because it was millions upon 
millions of dollars that we had to come up with and do things to fix this property up and put it in there. So we're proud of that daily. So I look at those when those guys get to buy a house or a new car or they're doing um, something to take their families on their very first vacation because they can afford to do it. And, yeah. and when they have a family of five or seven, they're taking them to a, another country or they're taking them to Vegas or wherever else they're going or family thing that they have that paid time off. They have that thing. So where some of them never had that before in some of their other previous employments. So we are not saints by any means. We are trying to figure it out day by day and we have family issues and problems and things that we try to work through, but we try to use the resources around us to make them as painless as possible. And we want to do the same for our employees. And we want to tell you as people that you're going to go through some growth pains and you and your wife are not going to get along all the time because you guys have different ways of making decisions or whatever else it is. But if you come together, you can make these decisions together and you can make it easier on each other. It's uh, sometimes not bringing the work environment home too. I mean, you know, that's a, that's another thing is that, you know, we bring that baggage from home. So sometimes you have to look for a different filter to filter that through. And, uh, and hopefully your family will be one of those filters and hopefully you can um, have some peace when you get home because peace is nice. I mean, yeah, having a, uh, a warm home to go to and kids to, that would like to be around you and hang out and do things. Go easy now. We have teenagers. Yeah, you know, that it's, it's it's a tough deal. But, you know, as much as they complain about this, the, the more they are always asking, where's mom? Where's dad? I know. Where that's they the at? question. Where they, where's he going? Who, they're doing, doing roll doing? call every yeah, time they so, see us. You know, it's it, they're worried about what's going on with us, and they worry about our health, and they worry about other things, too. So we want to make sure that they're included on some of the decisions that we make, too. So, You know, and I think that really um, – as you start to build a team or you are part of a team that you're leading, it's like what you do matters and what you say matters. And nobody is absolutely got all the answers, but just living in your own integrity. And if this is, if this is who you are, then just be who you are. And um, people will, will, they'll identify with that and they'll resonate. And I'll tell you, the, the raise up core values that we have plastered all over our office space and that I preach all the time on is who I am at, at the core of when my heart is completely open and I'm in this um, space of true identity, like that is who I am. And the goal is to just continue on that pathway of congruency throughout my entire life because I want to be the same person that shows up for you for dinner who shows up for the kids when they need something who shows up for the management team. Like I don't want them to have to be navigating through this. Like, what is it going to be like today? You know? And it's so the way that you're like walk, walking through that regulation piece is you have to do things in your own life to keep yourself stable. Alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not alcohol. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is a balancing act. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's not every day we show up our hundred percent and we have to, because we have to try to make sure that our employees know that we're hundred percent. So we have to put on our best game faces some days, but it's not as much as like you have to anymore. It's just like it, it comes naturally now. And it's, it takes time to get to that place. It takes time to, um, you know, I, I don't want to say trust your employees, but I mean, they're making, financial decisions they're making driver positions they're making all these different decisions upon us and at the, at the final at the final end of the day if something bad goes happen or something like a wreck or something else happens because we didn't put the right person in the right job or or the right somebody hits an airplane yeah you know, we like, like have that. all these areas you know, that we, we have can all have problems. these areas that we can have problems in and that we have to ensure that we're putting the best people in charge of those things and making sure we have the best drivers so sometimes uh it's a little tough for us i mean i, I I always love that famous line that when an employee wrecks a car or something, they say, well, that's why we have insurance, isn't it? I mean, no. God bless. You have no idea what our insurance or $50,000 a month we pay for insurance. You know, yes, we have insurance for accidents, but that's not our goal is to get into the accident. Our goal is to have a Prevent zero and accidents. be safe. Yeah. We want to make sure it's a safe space. And because we were trying to get somewhere a little quicker than we should have, we shouldn't have been on that, you know, because it, we're, we're paid by the hour or paid by the trip. You know, we, we want to be in a safe atmosphere. So, I always love that line. It's like, well, that's what we have insurance for, isn't it, boss? And I'm like, oh, that is that will raise the hair on my neck every single time. And I not I might not bring my best person forward on that and just saying, well, sure, let's hit your car, you know, let's see what happens there. Well, no, 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 you know. And so I guess in saying that is that we try to bring our best every single day, and uh, 
We want it for our kids and our family and our employees because when we come in energetic and we come into our space uh, with a good attitude, you can see the employees light up. If we're not in a good mood or something else is going on, you could see that and they will try to avoid you because they don't want to have any confrontations or problems or they just want to give you your space. And that's not what we're here about. We're here to bring them up and raise them up and make them the best they can because they're doing with our clients all day long. But it takes time. Don't think you're going to get this overnight. And even if you have the best customer skills, remember um, our employees are here to work with us and help us, but they're only at limited what their scope is, what they can do. So don't think that you're getting a person that's, Going to work be like a, you. A full-time chauffeur, and then all of a sudden he's going to make the decisions that our COO or our CFO or our CEO or our, our general manager is going to make. They they don't have that uh, they don't have that mindset because they're not put in that position. But a lot of them come to us with amazing ideas. A lot of them come to us like, "Hey, we could really improve this," and you should listen to those people because they're behind the wheel day in and day out. So they might have some good nuggets that you can take away from it. I always use that word nuggets, but. You can take some nuggets away from it because you wanted them to do it. I mean, we ask them about different things that they can do and how we can make things better. And they yeah. give us ideas about it. So we we want to we want to have a happy course of team. You know, uh, on one of our recruitment signs, you put on their um, safe space. Like what it was. A, well, and I was like, that's like an employee benefit is safe environment like I isn't that there. yeah you you were like i want that on there and i'm like okay oh so yes let me explain but, what the safe but, space was what, it was working at the airport it wasn't just that though it wasn't just that it was like i was thinking well isn't that a given that it's like it's safe to given. be at work and no, no it's not a given at all it's not a given that you are safe at work like, so what she's speaking of is that um one of the employee's parents uh, came to me and said they really liked them working as an airport ambassador at the airport, which is our wheelchair pushers that work for the airlines. Um, and they loved it because it was a safe place. It had police, it had fire, it has, it has doors they can go into. Um, there's no weapons allowed past a certain area. They love that idea that their that their kids were working in an atmosphere like that a was a secured area, a secured area that they were, they had access to get in and out and things like that. And we don't have a lot of things that happen bad at our airport. So they felt that it was a much more safer environment than it working at, you know, like uh, nothing against this pushing carts in, in, in the car's parking lot where they could accidentally get hit or something happens or they would get hurt in that sense. They, they didn't feel that or it wasn't fast food where they were dealing with belligerent employees and things like that or not employees, I apologize, customers, customers or customer services and things like that. Or they came home smelling like grease. This was an uh, uh, atmosphere that they were helping people. They were getting, getting access. exercise. They, they were getting tons of exercise. They were having badges to get between secure places. They, they had responsibilities and things. They have a radio to deal with. They have a tablet to deal with. Uh, so it gave them a great environment for one of their first jobs or one of their second or third jobs. And, you know, the nice thing about the airport too, is that we have a lot of other people that this is a secondary job for them because it's a great, because we run 24 hours a day. So yeah. when people say, well, I, I can't find another job that would work around my schedule. Well, it's hard for us not to find a we can a find place that a we can find a spot for you because our schedule is 24 hours a day. Yeah. And, and that's for everything. That's from our baggage claim delivery. That's always from our wheelchairs. That's from driving customers. That's from contracts. And it's all of it is 24 hours a day. So there's never a time that we usually can't use you. Well, you know, getting back to that idea though, I thought about that and it's like, it takes intentionality around creating a safe space, not just like, say from outside people coming and injuring you, but it's like part of that core value mindset, that raise up mindset is creating a safe space, a safe space for people to grow, a safe space for people to learn, a safe place for people to try something that had an unintended outcome. Like some people call that, oh, I failed, but I don't look at it like you failed. It was an unintended outcome. And what are we going to do to not go back there? And I think that um, when I thought about that comment on the banner, I was like, you know what, that's really what we are working towards is how can we make this safe for everybody, this safe environment that just fans the flame of growth and um, curiosity and um, raising yourself and, and those around you up in this um, uplifting way. So I just... Why do you... I'm crediting you to Thank that you. and I'm recognizing that. you publicly I'll take, for that. I'll take the nugget. I'll take the nugget. The beaver nugget? The beaver nugget. Okay. Ooh. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah. So, you know, and, and safe places are too for people's growth and ideas and uh, sexuality and, and race and things like that too. They should be all safe. That should all be a safe area for people that uh, there's not discrimination towards things. There's not, uh, it should be a, a safe workplace in that area too. And, um, you know, I think that that is one of the areas that um, we have every walk of life. 100%. We have so many different diverse um, ethnicities that work for us. And it doesn't matter um, where you come from or what your personal preferences are outside of our office. Um, you come and you bring your best and you you are in line with our core values, then we you're you're like in the fold and in the family it, the raise up the raise up perspective like we all don't have to be the same but we still can respect each other and we can still come from this place of support and um and understanding and that is something that uh i'm really proud of yeah. there are some people that work for us that were um like really abused by by other coworkers at other businesses because of their personal beliefs, and it's like um, we have it's our heartbreaking. Beliefs. We have our beliefs, but we don't push them on other people. We don't tell them that we want them to think this way or pray this way or do things. We we come there yeah. and if we believe in something, we might pray before we eat in front of everybody else. And if they want to join in, they can. If they don't, then it's not a big deal. Uh, we want them to be comfortable in their work environment, and yeah. that should be a safe environment too. And we do look at safety in other ways too. It's like we secure our building and everything in our buildings, uh, any doors that you want to get into that are secure doors. We have secure yeah. through going through the front doors, dispatch doors. We want to make sure that since we are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that um, our medics quarters are sealed up and locked and only those people can get in there. And when you have only certain credentials to get in certain doors, that's mm-hmm. all you can get into. We want to make sure that we have a great safe work environment for them also. And, um, you know, we're in a good part of town, but doesn't mean that bad people don't come around the good part of town too. You know, they, uh, we want to make sure that they're safe in that environment also. You know, and it, I think about the, um, the dispatch team or the CSA team that work at night that aren't remote that, that are in the building. Like I don't want people just wandering through the front door when they're in their offices doing their job and they're not maybe looking at the video camera to see who happened to be yeah, there. It's not a holiday gas station where people are coming out. We, no, we don't, uh, we usually don't get visitors that late at night and somebody's trying to get on our door and don't get me wrong. We've had some interesting characters show up at our doors at two o'clock in the morning and seeing that they were dropped off there and they need to come talk to us. And, you know, and we just kind of, you know, gently talk to them through the cameras and whisk them away. And we just want things to be safe for people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that when you're being intentional about some of the decisions that you make around safety, like it, it's not just, what's seen there's this energy that you bring to the environment and like you mentioned before like it doesn't matter if you're talking to children or you're talking to team members or you're talking to a stranger you bring an energy with you and um it can be a trusted energy or it can be scary like sure especially if you're um they don't know how you're going to react because some days you're this way and then some days you're this way and it's like a roller coaster everybody's allowed to have a bad day not a bad month yeah, it's more like not a bad week. Yeah. Like, um, and that's really it is it's like we can forgive each other uh, on these bad days because everybody has them. But it's like when there's a continual pattern, then it's like, what are you doing? Are you not getting enough sleep? Because as the leaders of the organization, we're responsible for taking care of ourselves so that we can regulate properly around the people that we're like responsible for. Well, and the other part of that too is that if we have a person that, negative or it's mean towards people it's it's our responsibility to pull that person aside and either redirect them or get them into a better space or maybe that's not the job for them so we've had lots of people that have applied for a position with us and they wanted to get in with us and realize that's probably not the best position for them and yeah. we've retooled them into a different position and they have a whole different outlook and uh it's like life, magic you know? yeah it was just like you know they were really stressed about driving and they weren't uh they, they didn't feel confident about their skills during the winter time, so that we put them as a CSA position. They loved it. They loved the controlled heating environment. They loved they sat at a desk. They didn't have to worry about ice or snow. They didn't have to worry about clients. And they loved so, customer service, so it was like, okay. So in the beginning when we brought them on, they looked like a perfect fit for that. But you know, sometimes when you get in and you figure out what the job is, sometimes that fit is not there. But 
we know their personality, they know their integrity and they're good people. So can we refit them somewhere else? And we, we've, we've refit a lot of people before because <clears throat> it, it, different aspects in our company are, are different responsibility and jobs. And sometimes it's a little bit less or sometimes it's not enough responsibility and they want to be challenged more. So we want to yeah. give them more challenges. And that's how we've made supervisors and people have gone from supervisors to managers. And, you know, then they get people here that have been here for a long time and, or just now, like even Paul Letty. I mean, I'll bring Paul up. Everybody knows Paul. Paul is the, our singing great uh, singer that we have, but he had been with us for quite some time and, He's probably had almost every position in our company besides mechanic and, and well, shoot, he's even done that. He's helped with floods and everything we've had at our buildings. And shop, shop, shops. Yeah, shop yeah. stops. And, you know, he does, he jumps in anywhere he can. And we asked him several times, you want to be on the management team? And he just, uh, you know, he was enjoying his time off during his times off. And then he, we finally came up or he came up to one of our and he goes, I think I'm ready, you know, and he's been with us for eight years now, nine years. And. You know, he does so much of the management positions as a supervisor that it just was a good fit to bring him into the fold there. And now, he's Well, like, we've been waiting. Like, we've yeah. just been waiting for Paul to decide um, because really the difference between a supervisor and a manager is the supervisor clocks out and goes home. But a manager sometimes has to answer calls or do something or... There's a little bit difference between those two. I mean, I, the, the managers run a team. The, the yeah. supervisors have a smaller uh, grasp of team. But yeah, the same concept. It, it he was, he was doing a lot of those duties already and he was going past what a supervisor did. We were just waiting for him to want to go to the next level. But again, if we'd have brought him in two or three years ago, he might not have been the manager he is now today because his focus was um, something different, doing uh, yeah. weddings, doing some other things on what his other side job was and singing. And, and he was going to Nashville and doing some contracts. So he's in a period of his life now that he's sticking more close to home and more stability and gets more time off. And there are some big benefits for him, pay raises, things like that for him to get there too. So when I say all that, we are trying to grow within our own uh, and we try to raise people up and that's part of the raise of values. Well, and I think that's what we do. And, and looking at just because somebody doesn't accept your invitation to move into this new area, it doesn't mean that, that, um, they're, they don't have a growth mindset. It just means that they have different priorities in that season of their life. And uh, you almost don't want to try to convince them no. to try it because then... I set yourself you, up for failure. Yeah, and, and then you're losing a valuable team member. Yeah. Because you're, you're kind of pushing them. And, you know, I remember one team member that you were you were like trying to push out of the nest to raise up their license into this higher level and um, you felt like your gut was telling you that you needed to like push that person. And I feel like sometimes that works for us where we have to have more confidence in them than they do in themselves until they get that confidence. And then other times it's like you just need to know when to pull back and go, okay, I understand you're not ready. And I appreciate the work you're doing right now. So. Happens sure. quite a bit. We have to believe in them. And sometimes they don't believe in themselves. So we have to help them believe in themselves uh, so they know they can get the job done. You know, it's intimidating when you look at these big 56 passenger buses and you look at these longer limos and you look at these different vehicles, way different than our sedans or vans, you know, but once they realize they all drive down the the road the same when you're going straight, you know, it's, they're just take longer to stop. Yeah. So we just, we have to sometimes encourage them and give them ideas of what they can do, what their growth potentials are and how that is. And, and some people are ready for it. Some people are not. And, I think that that's another part of the experience that we've had interacting with so many different personalities where it's okay. It's okay if you're not ready. Whereas before younger, in my younger years of leadership, I put it probably would have been like, just do it. You'll be fine. Well, you remember back in the day, I mean, like we, we'd hire somebody and within 24 hours, they were on their first trip because that was back in, you know, 22 we, years ago. We needed that help. Yeah. You know? And they were, and you we know, didn't the, know what we didn't know. And we yeah. weren't thinking about safety. It was like, right. think we, we were thinking about, about the customer. Yeah. We were thinking about safety. I think we we're just not looking at, um, what it takes to get hired here. I always laugh and say, geez, if I had to get hired here, I don't know if I'd make the cut, you know, get, Amy and those guys are very stringent on, on policies and procedures and things like that. And I'm, I'm more of a, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of an old school guy. Like, you know, Hey, why can't we hire somebody in a couple of days and get them working? What are we doing? But there's so much training involved and so much stuff for them to do. And so much optics now that it's, uh, it's not like the olden days, but you know, I, I enjoy when you go to an old place that you can just actually key in how much somebody owes, and they hit enter in total and the cash drawer comes out where 
you don't have to scan everything and do it and put codes in and you know then the, the check drawer out your own groceries. Out. yeah check out your own groceries I, i'm a total not you don't person that. that i hate that i think it I, it takes all the customer service out of it and and uh, i never trained to be a cashier so you know i don't want to make a mistake or be upset or somebody thinks i'm not trying to pay for something you know because i don't know how to work the machine you know <laughs> i just like you know, I'd rather just go up to somebody and have them bag my groceries. I mean, I feel like that's what we're paying for. And the same, I don't expect um, when somebody gets in our car to open up and shut their doors. I mean, it's part of our job is, as a chauffeur service is we get out and open that door unless they request us not to, unless there's a reason for it. Yeah. But it's always about the safety aspect of it. And I, I don't want to give a lesser service, you know. So I, I feel like. I feel like the groceries, there is some people that absolutely love the self-checkout and they don't want to deal with anybody and they, they love it. And there's some of us that are just like, you want that cute connection. I walked out of a store in California. I was pissed. I walked into California I had a whole gro- grocery thing. And I'm like, where's the cashier? And she's like, I'm sorry, sir. We're, we're a cashier, cash, cash cashier, less, less, less store. And I'm like, there's not one cashier. He's like, no, but you can go over there. I had like 200 items in this thing. I'm like, I'm not scanning and bagging all this. And I left the grocery cart there and she was upset. And I was like, I'm going to a store that, actually does customer service and I, I you know i don't want to be one of those old fogey guys that says it you know i'm 55 now but i believe that there is a person that scans it and does the correct job and knows how to put the codes in the last thing i want to do is I, after a stressful day is try to type in all the codes and look at this stuff and then weigh it and then try to bag it and i'm just like my day's already done i'm, I'm not doing this <laughs> like i don't need me? a second job I, yeah and, and are we paying is there a discount code at the end of this you know what am i doing here so but you know Different age brackets love those things. You know, kids love to order Grubhub and just have food dropped off at their front door and not even see something. I so. like to have stuff delivered at the house. Like I, I don't, don't I don't shop anymore. I think Amazon like, shut down. If we went ahead and shut down our account, there's not a box that's on our house every day between our family members or us. It's yeah. um, it's mostly the family members. Yeah. Unless I'm working a new project. But uh, but is. like I'm that person that appreciates that I can get in and out faster if I just scan the few items. Like if we're doing a huge grocery trip, like I'm ordering that and and either having it picked up or delivered to the house. So I mean, you can kind of see how these are just contrasts between the two of us, where we're not the same. And but there are so many pieces about our partnership and business and our partnership and our marriage. And our partnership in our family that um, that we are more aligned, and we have to focus on those alignments because it's really easy at times to like point out what we're not aligned on. And I feel like we spent a lot of time like talking about that in in our in our partnership how we are not aligned and now we're in this season where it's like how can we find alignment in every area so you guys have to understand that um athena had her own companies when she first started and when we were dating and she was working for some other people and then got into her different businesses and i had several different businesses uh when athena and i met and then bac started with brent and myself and then we had that until about 2004 four. Uh, yeah four. four and then we bought brent out and uh and then athena joined into the company and then we got married and so she's been a big part of this since the very beginning but not as much as she is today so um alignment has always been um kind of our views and her views but i think we're more in line together and, and that's a tough one I, I guess what i'm getting to is uh when you work with your wife and then you go home with your wife and then we're all the same all the time, there's so many people that come to us and say, how do you do it? And, you know, it's just like doing these trips and doing the company is like a failure is not an option. So we, we make it work. And I, and now it's not so much like we make it work. Now it just works. And for so long, we try to try to make things work uh, because different personality types, different leadership skills, different things, but the company's grown and, you know, I, the largest, the small, the medium-sized transportation company in Alaska, yeah. and uh, you know it's uh, partnership has that gotten us with our with our vendors just as much as our partnership and our relationship. So when I say all this, that you know um, it it is a different dynamic to work with your wife and then go home with your wife and then you know you have your wife and you have your kids um, a little bit differently than if you both had separate jobs sometimes and you brought different things to the table. Um, and you're not bringing the same stuff to the table. I, I guess I'm hoping making sense that, you know, we bring a lot of that stuff home, but we try to leave it at work now. We don't try to bring it home as much. And, 
know, we have plenty of time at work and then we have time at home. But it, it took us a long time to figure that out. Yeah. And, you know, I think another piece of that is things aren't so serious. Like we're able to laugh at each other and the situation way easier. And um, before it was like some kind of personal vendetta or like, I can't believe you said that. And it's like, well, and I think, I think we're in a different financial area. I think we're in our companies in a different area. I think everything is, I think we were hypersensitive to things that we probably shouldn't have been. It's like a, a splinter in your finger. It's not gushing blood, but every time you touched it, it, it hurt a little bit, you know, and you just didn't want it to hurt. So we're in a different period in our life. Um, and when I say that to everybody that's listening is that, there is going to be stages in your life, like a pyramid and you're going to build the ground foundation. You're going to build each one of these levels and it's going to get easier and easier as you get to the top because it's not as much building you have to do. You have less and less with each layer as you're going up because you're not using as much uh, material or whatever else it is. And hopefully that's going to have really, that will help you in your relationships with your employees, your, uh, your wife, your kids, everything else like that. But when you're first starting out, you know, it's all hands on deck and we were just trying to get things rolling and making sure we're making payroll and taxes and yeah. all the things that we're doing because, you know, you've got some pretty hefty responsibilities. responsibilities. And, you know, one of the things that we really looked at, and I think COVID really brought that to home, is like we really didn't realize how many people's lives that we impacted financially every month. I mean, you have 200 plus employees in their livelihoods to their apartments or their utility bills or their cell their phones, families. Their car families, their some families, people have like kids. seven children. So how that was going to impact everybody. And, and, you know, and I, we've talked about this in a previous episode is, but our knee jerk reaction, knee jerk reaction was to pull back and try to start blessing hours. And we just said, Hey, let's put this on pause for 24 to 48 hours. Let's really look into this before we make some big decisions on this. And, that has helped us out a lot. And then I think the respect of the employees was like, we were not laying people off. We were actually hiring. We were getting more hours, but there were some risk involved into it too. And they were more and willing to go through that journey with us and doing so really got some loyalty out of these people too. And I, I always want to say that we have some good loyal employees anywhere, but we were so loyal to them in this that they realized it too. So it changed our perspective and our mind thought too, and ourselves what we really can do. And, being faced with a pandemic that people won't want to want to leave their houses or go anywhere or do things uh, that really opened our eyes to a lot of different uh, ways that we can collaborate better. Well, and you know, it's like modeling this piece of like stepping into courage. That's really, I think the mantra of our entire entrepreneurial life is that we've had to like face that fear of, First, the first like stepping off fear is, is I'm going to be responsible for generating the income for my family or myself and making sure that like whatever my action is, is what's going to generate the revenue. And if I don't show up, then nothing's going to happen. And I know that it's like, yeah, that's the same kind of mentality. If you're like punching a clock, if you don't show up for work, you don't get paid. But it's like, it is really this fear of, I'm going to be responsible for generating income. And then um, without any help and nobody's going to be paying the bills and nobody's going to be like holding my hand through this, like I'm going to be doing it. And, and, and you like start to slide down this slope of like you gain momentum in practicing this stepping into courage. And if anything, I hope that that is what team members have seen and our kids have seen is that when we are in a position where we have to face a fear, or even if it's a fear that's being projected on us, like COVID was projected on so many of us, like what could happen? We don't know. It's the unknown. It's um, we had we had a choice to make, and and we did what that muscle memory was that we have done in the past as we stepped into courage, and I think that that's a message in our marriage. Some people don't understand us. They're like, um, but we're, we are humans and we are living a human experience. And at the end of it, you have to have courage to face things. And I think we're trying to live our best life now. I don't feel like, uh, in years past we're, we were enjoying life and doing stuff, but I think we're actually trying to live our best life now. And that's a, that's another, uh, whole nother story, but yeah. it's a, it, it definitely changes your ass, your, your outlook towards life and what's going on. And then as you get older, you'll realize that too, because one thing we can't buy back is time. So 
money can come and go, but you know, we only have so much time. So in that time, what are we going to do? Are we going to soul can be upset or mad at each other, or are we going to enjoy it and go on some vacations and have Laugh some lifelong and- experiences that we can take and take our kids and, you know, and then, um, again, you know, I, I, one of the things that we've done, we figured out for our employees is money is not everything for their, our yeah. senior management, but as much time as they put in, we put them on vacations. In the last two years, we've sent all of our management team to Hawaii and on that all expaid expensive trip for plane tickets, hotel, uh, the condos that we stay in, yeah. rent a car. Our family vacation our spot family vacation that spot. they we would likely not go, ever go to or, or would not be going in the season. But I can tell you the impact on that was massive. Um, and, you know, Athena and I were just thinking about that we had a really good year and what we could do two years ago to reward our team when we came up with this whole thing. It was your idea. Well, it I think was. it was ours, but um, we both collaborated on it and we did it. And, and it, was, uh, it was it was quite expensive. But you know what? People came back and it was just so amazing. And it's so funny is that requirements, you have to be a manager for with us for a year or longer and that you qualify for it. And uh, some of the ones didn't get to do it last year that did it this year. And they got to hear about the stories and some of them yeah. this year. We're so surprised. I, David will take David for something. He's like, Charlie, I, I had no idea where you put this up. This place is nice. And he had family live there. And he brought his family over to experience the the condo the resort. over there in, in yeah. Colina. And loved it and, and just was praising it. And just he came back for three weeks. And what was your, you know, what we always have a discussion in the beginning, you know, with something positive. He goes like, I want to talk about the trip to Hawaii, you know. And he, that, he kept bringing it back to that. And, and Chelsea, too. I mean, her and her family got to go yeah. experience that. And so many people have had so many great experience in their life that they would have probably never treated their self at this time in their age and their life uh, to that kind of vacation where it would cost them eight or 10,000 for a couple to go down. Or they're time. having, they have life goals and that's just not an expense they're willing to afford right now. hundred percent. And you know, we, we were never in that area back in the day either. I mean, I, we've been I would there. have loved it if somebody was like, here, go yeah. on vacation. So I'm on the board of uh, directors for Southern Regional EMS. And I remember talking about putting our managers there and there's a lot of state employees there and a lot of other people that work for other people. And they're like, well, can we apply for a job? You, you sent your people to Hawaii? <laughs> you know, they're like, we from the state. We barely get our three weeks off, you know. But I, I, I can appreciate that because it's something different. And, yeah. and it's not guaranteed every year we're going to do it. But as we do well, we look for different things, how we can send up our people too. And I think in your relationship, you have to do that too. And, you know, that's important also um, for our families and stuff like that too. So we got a trip that we're planning with our kids. And at the end of the year, we're going to take off and go in the motor home and go up the whole East coast. And we're going to have a good time and taking them up there and take two or three weeks off. Yes. As much of a good time as we can have with teenagers. And, you know, I, I, I enjoy the motor home side of it and I love go explore. And, you know, I think they're pretty excited about it because they've talked about it. So it's going to be fun. So. Yeah. And it's they, as fun as we'll make it for them. Yes. Yes. And, um, and not taking things so serious, even when they're like in a, in a mood or whatever, it's just laughing at the situation and moving on and not letting that become that energy become our energy. No and thorns, so, no thorns. Yeah. And so it's like, um, really at the end of this, it's like this, this beautiful understanding of really coming back to we're all human and we're here to take care of each other, not enable each other to do bad behavior but we're here to take care of each other and to collaborate and 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 to be a part of this community and and when we're in that space like we're we're like who we really were made to be everybody can't be at a 10 every day but if your partner's at an 8 and you're at a 5 then you can hit 13 you know you can you can make a 10 you can make a 10 plus you know you got to figure out where you're at and the same thing with your employees when they're not 100% you know what can i do to help you what can, where where can we where can we meet in the middle of this? And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of uh, family emergencies, you know, what have over 200 employees that there's always something to happen every day that, you know, that you're, uh, you want to be a part of and help them solve the problem. But sometimes you're just a voice. You're just, you're just, a, or an ear, I should say, just to hear what they have to say. They just need to load on somebody. And then if they ask you for your opinion, then you give it, and you don't, you don't. You know, and in our case, we have families that work for us that are connected where somebody's aunt works for us and, um, nieces and sister-in-laws our and I mean it's not just our family it's like a whole our family though too I mean in our family just alone we yeah have my cousin Mike and then we have Cindy and then we have Audra and then we have Charlie and then Orion helps us and so we we have a lot of different dynamic uh, things going on with families yeah and so it's like we want um, you want those referrals and just being mindful that 
it's like when you know that something is affecting Joe, well, his his sister works on the night shift. It's probably going to affect her too. And yeah, it's, it's not like, so good when somebody like uh, has a real big family emergency and then five people ask for time off because all five of them are related to that one person. You're like, oh man, that's going to really be a, 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 a struggle for us, but we'll make it work. But, yeah, you know, that, that has work. happened. That has happened quite a few times that we've had some people that uh, had some family emergencies and, you know, you get one person coming, the second person, and, you know, that's my cousin, that's my aunt, that's my uncle, that's my brother. And so we're, we're constantly trying to rework the puzzle. But you know what? It's, it's good. It's Those good. are the same people that brought on all their family members to help us with our company because they, we were growing and, they found a great job for them. So on the other side of it, it's... Uh, and they trust us that we're a fun place to work or, or we're, we're a place that is um, that feels right for them, that feels safe. And safe. that is something that we can safe be space. proud of. Safe, safe space. Safe space. Safe space, yes. All well, right. We appreciate you guys joining us for episode six and we're looking forward to seeing you next week. So thank See you, you for coming. Bye. Bye.